It was a grand hotel. There was a gentleman's clothing store. There was a restaurant at one point, and it could accommodate 75 guests. There were 75 rooms. Someplace thriving off the passing railroad traffic. Well, people could come in, get off the train, go and get a sandwich. They had open face Reuben sandwiches. They could go get a Coca-Cola if they wanted. But times changed and the hotel faded. For a short time, a sandwich joint and bar was in residence, but that's gone now too. And now the once grand lady stands condemned. As a kid, that's where I used to get my hair cut as a kid. <laughs> this was this was the place to come to to get, get your hair all trimmed up. The city would like to savor as part of their larger efforts to revive downtown Covington. We would like to again go back to a public private partnership uh, with the improvements to the old hotel and make it something again that would draw interest uh, to this section of our downtown. And they have reached out to the owner. But even as they have added new sidewalk and renovated the old train depot across the street, no specific plans are in place for the hotel Collins. The grand picture would be at some point in the not so distant future that all of this just becomes a very vibrant part of downtown Covington. In the meantime, the old hotel awaits a savior. In Covington, Bruce Young, WDBJ7. The town was founded in the 1700s. But it wasn't until 1868 that they got a formal police department now located behind their old headquarters in City Hall. Just to see the transition over 150 years, it's, it's actually remarkable to look at the, 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 the full spectrum of things. In the front entry of headquarters, they keep a display of artifacts from the department's history. I would say one of the oldest things is probably these these leather saps, these uh, sticks were actually carried on duty. Officers had actually carried those years and years ago. Captain Mark Riley, a 25-year veteran of the department, has made a hobby of preserving them. A lot of police officers like to, you know, hang on to their history and stuff. And I think, I think it's important to show, you know, where you where you've been and, and also, but where you're going. I think we even came across one of the very first radars they had here, complete with its manual. It's old, old, old. But the policemen say it's the tradition of service and community relations that are at the heart of the department's history. Everything I've read and seen and have come across that the community was very involved with its police department and that's no change from today. I think Lexington is a community that's very involved with its police department and likewise the police department with its community. In Lexington, Bruce Young, WDBJ7. For most parades at VMI, they march out to a military tune. But today, just a quiet drumbeat. Something more worthy of a funeral. It's an important last statement that they receive and that they make in the preparation and the presentation of this uh, parade that comes at the just, just ahead of the graduation itself. A parade to mark the 1864 Battle of New Market and the cadets who died there. I see it through a tart! Who are called out in the roll call. Corporal Atwill, died on the field of honor, sir! In this case, by a cadet with a unique connection. Sir, I've uh, been able to have that honor for the past four years. Uh, this was my last time, and uh, it's, it's, been, it's been quite fun. Because Henry Atwill's family has a legacy here. My uncle, my grandfather, uh, my great-grandfather, then my great-great-great-uncle from uh, the one that I was uh, yelling out for in the New Market Parade. Corporal Sam Atwell, who, as they say, died on the field of honor. I got used to hearing Corporal Atwell every time I walked by somebody calling my name out. But despite his unique connection, he is eager for tomorrow's graduation. I mean, I'm just, I'm glad, you know, I got through it. It was tough, but uh, I mean, I, th I think I'm all, all for the better. At VMI, Bruce Young, WDBJ7. They can be seen in front of restaurants, they can be seen in front of tourist attractions, and there are several still on Route 66. But over the years, they've diminished. Giant statues, like this one, generally known as muffler men, because they were often made for auto parts stores. In the 70s, the company that was originally making them, they closed down. And it wasn't until just probably about uh, maybe 20 years ago where I got a hold of some of these molds. And that's how he became the doctor to the giants the fiberglass physician. And I've traveled all over the country, building, repairing, delivering. One of only two places you can go when your giant needs a helping hand. Yeah, people become attached to these these characters, almost like they're, they're members of the family. After a while, I mean, they grow up seeing them. Uh, when they see them age, it's like anything. You see something, 
you see something aging, I mean, you know, with me and you, there's not a whole lot we can do about it, but, you know, I'm the fiberglass physician, and I can go in and make these guys look great again. Even if it means building them up from scratch with newly molded parts. What, what a thrill to be the guy that comes back and helps to preserve this. It's just, um, it's just a, a great feeling, and it brings so much joy to people's lives. At the Enchanted Castle and Natural Bridge, Bruce Young, WDBJ7.